especially when I watch street fighting videos, which I, I'm not a fan of street fighting at all. I don't think anyone should street fight, but I'll see these videos and you'll see a bigger guy, you know, maybe bullying a smaller guy. And I just think if that smaller guy did two months of training, he would be able to beat the bigger guy all day long. If he knew how to throw a punch, yeah. and I talk about this on my videos as well, everyone should learn how to throw a punch. Because if you can throw a punch, you know, you, hopefully you never need it, but you know, it'll come in handy. I did want to start out by talking to you guys about how you guys survived. You guys had physical gym locations doing very well. I mean, we, how long has it been since In the we heart saw of you darkness. Guys? We saw yeah. you guys down there a long time ago, right? Yeah, I think it was, it was 2018, maybe 2019. It was a, a while ago. It's yeah. been a while, right? At least a few years. And yeah. you guys were crushing. You guys were exploding. Yeah. I remember you guys were start opening up new locations. It's in yeah. LA. You have to point that out. Yeah, it, in Los Angeles. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> everything got shut down. And yeah. you guys were in probably one of the most regulated strictly regulated places in America when it comes to, especially gyms. Gyms were the la the first places to close, right. the last places to open. I'm glad to see you guys have survived, but how did you, how did you guys handle all yeah, that? Yeah, it was, it was horrible. I remember when the first announced it, I was like, this, this can't be right. You know, I mean, everyone felt the same, like, really? Mm. What, what? And um, yeah, so we had to close down. It was March 15th. And then we had hundreds and hundreds of members coming each day. So I was like, well, we need to, continue to work these members out, give them workouts. So March 16th, I went live on YouTube and I was like, I'm gonna give them a, a workout online. Mm -hmm. So one of the first people to do it, I think it was in Los Angeles. Um, and then we had hundreds of people training online, but obviously it's, it's not the same. And then it kind of just dragged on and dragged on and dragged on. And then it got like really serious where months had gone by and it was like, what, what are we gonna do? What was the what was the initial draw? Obviously, you got to have some people that instantly ran in and said, "I want to cancel." Yeah, you have a small per I don't know what percentage that was. Yeah, and then some people were like, "Oh, cool, he's giving us videos so we can do this at home." So they stayed. How, what did, what did the drop off look like? Did it like half the memberships go right away, or like what did it look like? Yeah, right the, 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 the drop off uh, not not right away because people everyone thought, "Oh, it's just going to be for a week." Yeah, two yeah. weeks yeah. Yeah. a week, and then like two a month. People well, was like, "Well, said. I'm so, so yeah. this this two hundred and fifty dollars a month keep coming out of my account. I'm gonna have to." pause this right now. It's only like the real hardcore that like really wanted to like almost see it as a contribution at that point. They're like, yeah, just keep charging me. I want to keep supporting the gym. I know I can't come in, but that was very small. Yeah, I, I pay, I have three gym memberships that I still never stopped, right? I paid through the whole, and I actually still haven't been back to any of those gyms, but mm -hmm. I continue right. to pay. Just, I felt like just being in that space them. and yeah. it's, that, it's a small amount of money to me and stuff like that. If I can help a small gym keep going. So I'm sure there's a small percentage of those yeah. people. Yeah. And would you really say half or like how much do you think, would you say cut right, right yeah, up? Yeah, I, th I think half cut within the first two months, okay. which was a huge- That's massive. Massive. Like, um, I think it was like close to a hundred grand a month, like just stopped and it was like, wow. And our landlords are still like charging rent. And cause again, they thought that this was going to, you know, iron itself out and, and, and be fine, but it wasn't. Um, and not so, just charging any rent, charging LA level rent, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is which is ridiculous. But you know, every, the members like you, yourself, Adam, who continue to appear, it was huge for us because even them two hundred and fifty dollars that people were giving us, it was big because we still had uh, the staff to pay. This was before they were getting the unemployment, so it was it was very tough, and you know, we didn't know what was going to happen with the future and. Luckily, like you said, we, we survived it, but one of our gyms didn't survive it. We had to close down one of them, one of the locations, and we were paying like 22 grand a month rent for that location. Um, and they were billing us every single month, even when we were closed, we were getting these bills each month. What, ma what made you decide to, to let it go? And why, how did you keep the other one? And why that one? Like, at what point did you go like, okay, we're, we're bleeding? And at this yeah. rate, it, we could be closed for another six months. Like, what what point did you go? We got to stop the bleeding. And then I imagine you laid off people. And yeah, and well, then, all the trainers left. Uh, well, just about all of the trainers left. And a lot of the trainers were taking our clients and then training them elsewhere and getting money in in the pocket. Which you know, that's a, a different story. I think going in going into the closure, the staff at the gym there was probably about twenty trainers on staff. Yeah, and then. At the uh, reopening, we were like down to like three. God, what a so hard everybody just decided, right, to leave. I'm not going to stay on staff. I'm going to go get the unemployment money and just train my clients outside of the what gym. A, what so a, it, it, the whole culture and staff and the community just kind of just died. What a crazy predicament to be in like that. If you're, I mean, that's, 
you have to understand kind of from their perspective. Yeah. You know, totally. it's like survival of the fittest. Yeah, they they just lost their income. Yeah. Yep. What do you expect to do? But then you got to understand from you guys, you, they wouldn't have those clients if you didn't yeah. provide the right. space for them to do it. Yep. So did that create a, a lot of... Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, it, man. It, it did. I understood what they were doing. And to be honest... Still I, hurts though. I, I would I would have probably <laughs> done what they had done right. if I was in that situation. But it did really hurt because they were like, some of them were like brothers and, and we were close to them. And then they were sneakily taking clients and, and teaching them somewhere else and keeping the money. Even though at the time we said to the trainers, we're going to give you 80% of your of your personal training revenue and we'll take 20% rather than the 50-50 split. So we give them a higher percentage because they were struggling. Uh, but even then they still took them and took the 100%, wow. which, which, was, which was hard for us. What was the, uh, at, at any point were you thinking we got to close them all? Wait, this is uh, going to have to end this? Yeah, we, we really did because the the debt was building up, keep building up. And, you know, we did get some help from the government, which was great. I think we got uh, about 250 grand overall, but that went towards wages and rent. Right. So what they did, they, they said that 60% of it's got to go towards wages and 40% towards rent. So we did that, but we still ended up in, in, a, in a big- Right, that only gets you, I mean, when you're doing, paying 20 plus thousand a month rent, you got a staff that's probably it's overhead alone, alone. Yeah. 40 to $60,000 a month. So it's like, they got you three months probably at Bocce, yeah, I would guess. Yeah, yeah. Three or four months, which which, yeah. it, which it helped for, for the time being. But yeah, like, yeah, but not for a, a pandemic that goes on for over a year. Yeah. Well, how yeah. long were places shut down in LA for? We, we, we closed down for, I think it was eight months. And then they let us open for a month. But the time when we had to open, we had to have so many restrictions where it was like you had to be ridiculous. 12 feet apart. Uh, you had to have disinfectant. You had to have all these different cleaning supplies. And there was, you had to take temperatures of everyone that comes in, different waivers. So we spent a fortune on getting the gym turned around so we could actually do the classes. After three weeks of that, it was like, no, no, we we closing you again. So like, but oh, but nobody was showing up with those restrictions yeah. in place too. So it was like, yes, we can finally open. Everyone's going to come back in. But no one, we, we had this expectation that it was just going to be flooded again but with no. people. People hesitant, huh? Despite all the social distancing and all this. And we'd set it all up. A ton of work went into that, zoning things out and everything and all the disinfectant and everything. And one person would show up, two people wow. and be like, I, yeah, wow. I remember, nobody wants to do this. I remember yeah. up here, there were there, when that all happened, they had restaurants that were like, okay, we're going to build an outdoor area. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And they spent, you know, I know one business owner spent over a hundred thousand dollars on building a really nice outdoor eating area only to be shut down again three weeks later. Yeah. yeah. They were so furious. So it, it did shut down again. And then at that point, uh, Kevin, one of the co-owners in the gym, went it to Tony's partner in the gym, went to the city and asked if we could, we had like, I think, was it like 12 parking spaces yeah. outside? Asked if we could open that and zone it off as an outdoor gym and they allowed that. And that right there, if that option wasn't available, both gyms would have had to close. Yeah. Having that outdoor space available saved it because then we started running classes outside. We built a whole turf area where the parking spaces were, hung heavy bags off the outside wall. And then people started to enjoy that. They would come and do the outdoor classes. It felt a little safer. It was kind of getting things back around. Without that, it would have gone under. So yeah. just that alone was enough to at least save. Yes, that one, saved it. One. Just just yeah. about save it, but still, we're still left in a, in a big hole. Yeah. But even with the outdoor classes, up until um, up until the, the the end of last year, you know, people still wouldn't really come. They were still scared. Yeah. Watching the news all the time. We started to wear masks. And then what was crazy uh, is someone's mask would come down past the nose, just just underneath the nose. And then we would get a massive email complaint of other members. This client's mask went down the nose. Your trainers need to be more responsible and telling oh, people yeah. to put the masks on. Mm -hmm. And this happened multiple times. Not having a mask off, just down past the nose. Yeah. Or your trainer, your trainer pulled the mask down when they were shouting directions during a class. Uh, if this happens again, I'm not coming back to, to, to the gym. We wow. Like, what the? Mm -hmm. Just hysteria. You know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, you Complete know, it's funny. Hysteria. They did a study that, uh, out of gyms and they found that they were not, um, they were not vectors of transmission. They were not any major. Well, which, which I, I look, I, I've been in gyms my entire life. The, the first place you skip when you start to feel a little sick is the gym. Mm -hmm. People don't skip going to the restaurant or going to the movies or going out. 
But if people feel, ah, I'll skip the gym. So well, it's probably one of the reasons why. Not only why. that, mm-hmm. there's also a bias that most people that go to the gym are fit. health conscious and fit. Yeah. So you have the, 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 what is the smaller percentage of the population that even caught it or had any struggles yeah. with it. So that was the irony of the, some of the strictest laws were on gyms. Yeah. Right? When you looked at all the shit that was going on, movies being made still and restaurants still being able to operate with these, <laughs> these ironic T- uh, closed tents outside, yeah. which I thought was, was hilarious. Inside, outside. You'd, have, you'd have these yeah. these <laughs> outside tents that were sealed with no ventilation yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. they could do, but then they couldn't be inside the, bi- yeah. the building with yeah. the circulation. It just blew my mind. You kind of kind of going off point a little bit, but at that time, I just remember thinking like, you want everybody indoors, and you don't want people going to the gyms, right? Two of the things that build immune systems yeah. and that keep any chance of keeping this thing off pre-vaccine and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. The two main things that are going to help increase your chances of fighting this thing off, you're stopping people from doing it. Well, they can't yeah. go work out. Well, they you, can't go outside. Like, I was just like, Ugh. Yeah, well, you guys are also... So- What's up, everybody? Today's giveaway is MAPS Strong. This is a strong man-inspired workout program, and here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Uh, turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comments, we'll notify you in the comment section that you got access to MapStrong for free. By the way, we will never ask you for your credit card number. We're not going to send you to other sites. There are some scammers in the comments. So the only way you'll know you win is if Mind Pump ourselves lets you know in the comments section. Also, in this episode, we talk about Tony Jeffries' boxing certification courses for coaches, and we convince them to give our listeners 15% off. So if you're interested in your trainer or coach, Go to TonyJeffries.com, use the code MINDPUMP. Also, uh, if you're a gym and you want to license their group boxing class courses, go to the same website, TonyJeffries.com. Just mention MINDPUMP when you submit for an application. You can get two months uh, for free. Also, we got the final hours for our sale this month. Map Starter, 50% off. The Prime Pro Bundle, 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description to get the discount. All right, here comes a show. Yeah, well, you guys are also so in LA, and I saw that in Los Angeles, they gave a lot of exemptions to like movie production. So uh, there was one place in particular, I saw this one clip where there was like this shopping center with like coffee shops and restaurants and mom and pop stores, all forced to shut down. But then they had they brought in movie trailers and directors. Wow. And was that the woman film. that was hysterical about that? Or, yeah, and she was like crying on yeah, camera. Yeah, I remember, I remember thinking clip. this yeah. is not. So at any point, you can you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. But at any point, did you guys think to yourselves, let's just be like speakeasy style. Let's do this on the side. Have people come in. Nobody say anything. So let's do our thing. I, I, I was I was doing that like <laughs> yeah. for in terms of private training. Yeah, like I, the the gym was closed. The doors were closed. But my own private clientele. Mm. Uh, Fortunately for me, we're kind of on the same page as me. We were like quite happy to just come in and still do the private training. So I was, yeah, behind closed doors, I yeah. was doing private training. That's exactly. We all talked about it off air. We talked about this, like, you know, that we felt so blessed that we had built something like this that allowed us to still continue. Like really the, our business was not affected negatively by COVID at all. We were lucky because had it been just five years previously or 10 years before, we, we, were, all been hit. we all would have been screwed. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we all say like, well, what would you do? You know, was, dude, I would, I would have definitely done stuff under the table. There's no mm-hmm. way. I mean, I would have had to, at that point it would have been sur- survive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I would, the only way that I would have put food on the table or continue to pay my rent and to take care yeah, of so my feel responsibility to your clients. And you believe in what you do and you're, you're, you know, we're, or improving people's health. Totally. That was kind of the feedback loop for my clients. We were like, I, instead of doing two a week, I wanted to come in like three times a week. And yeah. then, th- then it started becoming like, can you come to the house? And then it was like, oh, my friend wants to go to, can you go to the house? Mm-hmm. And so I started, I got busier <laughs> and picked up more in-home sessions. So I found myself driving around LA where everything was shut down. I could get around the city in 20 minutes <laughs> really? instead of two hours. <laughs> so was, I was flying. That's the one silver lining. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Well, I, made, I made more money than I've ever made <laughs> during the pandemic. It was great. Yeah. So, no, you know, so here's an interesting thing too i talked to some friends that own gyms that survived most gyms shut down i don't remember what the number was but i know a majority of of small gyms were done but the ones that were able to stick around when things reopened they saw such a huge influx and i I think it's partially because the competition was kind of wiped out did you guys notice anything like that when things were finally people are okay i'm not scared to come we're open did you guys start to see like okay we got more interest we didn't not in in, not in west alia and I think people are still a little bit afraid. A lot of people were still a little bit afraid to come into the gym. So, you think, is it still that way right now? Um, not not so much right now. 
but it, it was for a long time. Wow. So right, right now, yeah, we're, we're, we're taking over, we're doing well. We're not doing half as well as we were before COVID, mm -hmm. but we're still, you know, we're, we're still surviving. Yeah, so that's still hurting though, in my yeah. opinion. I mean, if you haven't even got back to original numbers, I mean, saying yeah. that you're at half still, that's still- In my experience, I mean, in my opinion, you guys are the best the best boxing gym I've ever been to with working yeah. out. I think so to your crazy. point, what that highlighted more than anything else was this, and you know, uh, obviously if you were affected and you had to shut down, this is going to come off a little wrong. But I mean, it, the strong businesses, the people that had solid business models uh, survived that. Yeah. And the ones that didn't, it definitely got rid of them. Now, that doesn't mean that there weren't some good business models and good business operators that were dramatically affected or maybe had to shut down. I'm not saying that. Yeah, because who has, but who has 10, 10 months of cash flow? Just right, but there. a bulk right, yeah. of them, a bulk of them, uh, that percentage that, that had to shut down and never came back. Um, it really, I mean, it, what it did is just exacerbated the problems that they already potentially had. That they were operating with low cash flow, or they had a major overhead, or they didn't have a long term plan. Yeah. And so, that's what I think that yeah. highlighted. Yeah, and you had to see like how businesses were able to pivot now and, and like find other opportunities. And so, I want to get a little bit more into your virtual side. Like, how did you, you know, structure that, and how did you deliver that, and, and come yeah. up with that? Well, we went with the, after we were doing YouTube lives, you know, we, we're not getting paid for doing YouTube lives. Uh, we're just providing a service for the clients, hoping that they would stay on and continue to pay the memberships. So we we needed to uh, have, a, uh, have a, a paid product and we went and used uh, Vimeo, which mm -hmm. was very expensive. It was like mm -hmm. a grand a month or something. Uh, so we put a lot of time and energy into that. Built, built out a, like an on-demand platform for people to, to sign up for that. And we did that and it, it kind of flopped a little bit. It, it, that didn't do as well as we thought because when we launched that, that's when the gyms kind of reopened. So oh. we took our foot off the ball and then the, then the, the gyms closed. Uh, so yeah, we, we focused on that a lot, but it, it didn't pay off. And it's kind of what we had to do. You know, you had to pivot, you had to do something in the fitness industry. It was successful for a lot of people, but I felt like, in 2020, mid end of 2020, 2020, all gyms started doing this. Yeah, and then you have apps like Nike or, or even Peloton that were just killing it, crushing it. So we kind of competing with them and asking for a higher price point, you know, to pay our our bills. Like I see a higher price point; it was like thirty nine dollars a month compared to when they're charging ten dollars a month. People would rather go with them. So you guys, so after this all happened, you guys are like, let's go back to what we did before and you went back to the gyms and then the certification courses. Yeah. How were the certification courses during this period? I'm assuming you couldn't really host any or Yeah, so we we so our online certification course, this is where we teach trainers how to teach boxing to other people. And you know, we did like I think in twenty eighteen we did nineteen courses around the world. Then then twenty nineteen we did twelve courses, one in this gym here. Uh, so that was booming. And then obviously 2020, we couldn't do any live courses. Mm -hmm. So we already had an online course for the boxing certification. So we kind of were just promoting that. And that did well. Mm -hmm. That did that did pretty well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So that was okay during that, that whole period. Yeah, the online course did kind of did pretty well during the pandemic. It's, it's, it did probably, it do well enough to make up for the non in person, or it just did better in relative? Oh no, like no, no we we weren't earning like a hundred grand a, a month. Okay. You, what we needed to to you know sustain the gym, um, but we we were earning enough to make a make a little bit of money for ourselves. Mm. You know, yeah. Yeah. What would you, if something like that happened again? Is there anything you you would do different, or you guys did you change anything just in case, or is it like okay, that's a one off? We'll never have to worry about that again. Yeah, the the you're talking about if the pandemic happened again. Yeah, like, or something yeah. like that, right? Because it's we're, mm -hmm. I, I think it, for a lot of people, it made it. I mean, I, I know it did for me. Like, man, we're really vulnerable, mm -hmm. or some businesses are really vulnerable to you know to stuff like this, where they could just tell you you can't do business anymore. Yeah, uh, if if it happened again right now, I don't know if our gym would be able to survive. Yeah, it's because because earlier was was like we mentioned that it was terrible, and a big one of the hardest things was we lost like all of our staff, and it takes time to train yeah. up your staff yeah. and, and all of that and find the right people in LA is very hard to find trainers. So to get them and then lose them and start that again as well, it's it's tough. Did you guys ever think about leaving and going somewhere that was a little less restrictive in terms of location and like starting it all over again? Yeah. Because- No, we didn't think about leaving because again, we didn't know when this was going to end. Oh, it, right. could, it could have been next week, they're going to change the rules. Because yeah. you boys know like they were changing the rules every other week, something was happening. So it was like, <laughs> are we going to open next week? Are we going to open next week? And we were just hoping that that would, that would happen. Yeah. So it wasn't like, 
let's just pack up and go somewhere else and try and get a new clientele because we had a, a community and, and a membership there that we thought, you know. I think we, we've we always uh, valued like the digital side of the gym. Like we've, because we've had the academy since 2015, 2016. And then once that started kicking off as live courses, we quickly thought, how can we get this online? Mm -hmm. And then the same with the classes now, it's like we've always, the Box and Burn class has been really successful for us, won awards and all that. So we've always had that kind of mindset. How can we take this online? How can yeah. we put this in other gyms? How can we digitize our products? Um, Tony's always great at that, always thinking about how to digitize and put things online. Um, so I, I think if it was to happen again, I feel like we're in a, a spot now where we're, we're probably even stronger online. I know Tony is through YouTube, obviously, but um, I think our products in terms of the, what we're doing with the licensing and the academy, the fact that they're pretty solid online now and they're digitally based products uh, kind of safeguards us a little bit. Um, so I, I, if there's any gym owners listening or, or personal trainers, I, I would encourage them like to safeguard yourself if you are worried about something like that happening again. I'm just not guarantee it's not, it's right. not going to happen again. Is um, just pay attention to the digital side of your your product and your business. Well, I was going to say you kind of mentioned your visual or your your virtual training side is not being initially successful, but don't you feel like you know the work that went into that in terms of like capturing a lot of that content and you know you guys being able to kind of repurpose a lot of that stuff, getting you in the mindset of how to um, you know, replicate a lot of what you guys do physically, but virtually now, Yeah, you know, in terms of that being valuable and maybe opening up other ideas of how to scale what you guys currently do. I mean, is, did this up unlock other ideas, I guess, in a sense, in terms of how you guys are thinking about your business being totally. online? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely did. And if it did happen again, we would focus more on, on the online side of stuff. Cause like you see, we've already got that built out and it will be just to, to promote and, and push that. Um, but what 2020 did uh, was was really give me the opportunity to create more time and start creating content to help people with my, my YouTube channel. And if it wasn't for the pandemic, I wouldn't have blew up on on, you, on YouTube. Let's talk about that yeah, for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. so so You've what been did killing you, it? What did you do on YouTube that that what did you first start doing there that really started to get some attraction? So being consistent uh, and I've. Uh, posting on YouTube boxing education and you know I seen there was a all the other boxing education on YouTube and I was like this is it this is it I was like there's a, there's a gap in the model I can do this way better than them mm -hmm. I'm creative I've got a creative brain I know how to retain people on videos so you know I start doing that and posting and then in 2020 it just blew up and was there one video in particular that you could you could recall where you're like oh wait this is the this is the model or this one's really got starting to get traction yeah it was three realistic combinations how to, on a heavy bag shot on an iPhone with a little <laughs> microphone. Isn't that funny? So funny. <laughs> and then that video absolutely blew up and I'm like, I need to do this again. And then it's harder to do it again, you know? <laughs> yeah. But then that just started a snowball effect. And I was like, wow, look at this. And I just stopped being consistent with it. And then uh, we hired a team to help us with the video edits and everything else. And I start investing money into this and that's when it just changed everything. Yeah. You know? Now, when you, so we do this, right? If we have something that does way better than other pieces of content, we'll sit down and try and figure out what it was. Was it what we were talking about? Was it how we were communicating it? The way it was edited? Maybe there was a particular angle that we took that really resonated. Were you able to take that video, deconstruct it and say, okay, I can see why this did so well. And this is how I should maybe repeat it. Was there something about that video that, you were able yeah. to pull from. There was, and I think you're sort of related to this, and you can do all what you said and do a, another version of it, but then it'll flop, right? Have you done that before? <laughs> yeah. Like, no, no, that's yeah, bit, if that's I do true. this, it'll work. If I do this, it'll work. And then you do it and say, oh, it didn't work. Yeah. You know? But then you'll do something else and then that that there will, will blow up. And yeah. Uh, yeah, just being consistent and trying new things and trying what you said, try, trying to uh, learn from the videos that did well and... And you know, yeah. you'll do well. I like your videos that show like how to, this is when I watched a view where you like, how to actually like, which punch throws is more powerful or whatever. And you're yeah. actually showing people, this is how you throw a punch that really generates power. Right. And a lot of people have no idea, you know, yeah. especially, you know, guys on the street, they, oh, if I hit someone this way, it's going to be real. Yeah. And you're just educating them. I feel like that to the average person, uh, it easy and resonates and it goes, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's very valuable. Well, it's like the know? one he said that went viral. It's pretty basic information, I would think. Yeah. Which is, I think we've learned the same 
same situation. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the more viral videos we did was the push up and pull up one, which actually what was interesting for us that that went viral a year after it was released. Yeah. So we had done it a year ago, but for some reason when the pandemic hit, everybody was looking up how to do a proper push up and pull up. And we had some stupid clip. We didn't have haircuts or anything. Yeah, no, it was <laughs> terrible. It was, it was a terrible video and, and it might've done way, way better <laughs> yeah. if there was actually some effort. Into Wait, did you have the hammer mustache on that one? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Oh, and your hair, remember you had, had a bum, you had a bum, you had your beard all growing out and your hair was all crazy and wild. That's why maybe I got to try again. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, but amazing. yeah, but we tried to recreate it a bunch of times and then right. and then nothing happened. That's the amazing thing about YouTube, why I think it's the best platform out there because you do a video, if you do a video on, on Instagram, five days later, it's gone. Yeah. Do a video on YouTube, a year later, it's getting picked up. Yeah. Like I was just showing Glenn one of my videos that today, one of, one of my videos, it's about how to defend yourself in a street fight. I posted that a year ago and uh, in the last, 48 hours it's at like 150,000 views mm, yeah. and that was posted like yeah we, we've had several situations so we had a, a big fitness article one of the very first video that reached millions of views for us was a fitness article wrote about uh our and referenced our plank and that was like almost wow. a year later joe rogan uh talked about how to do a proper turkish get up i think at that time we were the only like good video on turkish get up mm -hmm. Um, so it went that went viral nice. on a time. Yeah, so that's cool about YouTube is you kind of never know. Like it just yeah. if all of a sudden a wave of people searching a topic and you have a good video related to that. Totally. So, so I, I kind of see it as like you're putting a book in a library. Yeah. You know, yes. like you create your content, you're putting it in the library and then you let it sit there. And then over the next like five, 10, 20 years, people are just looking for that book and then they find it. Yeah. That's you know, right. Like with, like you said, with Instagram, it's like you put it up there and it's, no one's going through your yeah. Instagram feed yeah, what yeah. you posted three, four months ago. Yeah. Yeah. I got to ask you, so, so as, uh, as a, as someone who's been a trainer for, you know, long time, right? Over two decades, it's hard for me not to notice things like biomechanics and form and technique. And I mean, I could see someone running, I could see someone working out and it's like, you know, it's like, you know, a language that is, that other people don't know. So I understand what's going on very easily when I watch it for someone like you, who's a, obviously a high level boxer when you watch, cause there's lots of videos on YouTube of street fights and yeah. this guy versus that guy. And Oh, the bouncer took this guy. When you're watching this kind of stuff, are you watching? I, it, that must happen to you. Where you watch it and you go, "Oh my gosh, look at oh, that! Yeah. That yeah. punch is you." He should have wrote him. He yeah, could, it's like he wrote him a letter telling him he's gonna punch him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, a month ago, when I, that was so. Does that that happens to you then? Yeah, I see it all the time, and it, especially when I watch street fighting videos, which I, I'm not a fan of street fighting at all. I don't think anyone should street fight, but I'll see these videos and you'll see a bigger guy, you know, maybe bullying a smaller guy, and I just think if that smaller guy did two months of training he would be able to beat the bigger guy all day long if he knew how to throw a punch. Yeah. And I talk about this on my videos as well. Everyone should learn how to throw a punch. Because if you can throw a punch, you know, you, hopefully you never need it, but you know, it'll come in handy. Sal, can you punch? Yeah, I don't know, maybe. Do you, I mean, do, you feel, do you feel really that confident? I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big statement. And that's really interesting that you could say that, that it just takes about two months of like good discipline yeah. and the person who has learned how to punch in a say over two or three months time could really outclass someone who outweighs them by 50 to 100 pounds yeah. in a street fight wow 100 percent, 100 percent. if you can learn how to throw a correct punch which doesn't take long you know you'll beat you can you can beat anyone no matter if they're 100 pounds heavier than you uh yeah if you for that correct punch with a correct technique. I would have never believed this years ago until I did uh, box with a boxer. I didn't box with him, but he, he was showing me how to punch and hit a heavy bag. He was a 140 pound guy and the snap and power that came out of his hands. It wasn't I me, was it? No, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. You right. know, I couldn't believe that someone could hit that. But, you know, I did jujitsu as a kid growing up. And I know with jujitsu, guys would come in, big, strong guys, whatever, and they just didn't know what they were doing. It was like, you know, <laughs> I, if you're good, you could yeah. you could submit them while eating a sandwich. Yeah. It was like that easy. So so, so, what's the, what are the biggest mistakes that people make when they throw a punch? The swing that comes from right back all right, the way over. Yeah. 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 And, and their hips natural, and core. The hold the breath and, you know, and... What do you mean hold the breath? Like... <gasps> Like, <laughs> what do you want to do? Let it <laughs> out. Real, yeah, it's nice and relaxed. Okay. Just like you would be doing when you're lifting weights, yeah. you know? Right. You would, you would breathe, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's funny you talk about jujitsu. I've just done a video where I did um, I did 30 sessions of jujitsu. On day one, I sparred with a purple belt who was 50 pounds lighter than us. He's, he was how'd like you like that, by the way? 140 pounds, right? How'd you, how'd you feel on the ground with a guy who knows what he's doing? Mate. And then 30, 30 <laughs> sessions later, I sparred him again. So I, I'm like... 
I'm I'm pretty strong. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're a fit guy. Yeah. 190 pounds. I'm pretty athletic, pretty strong. And I'm like, he's skinny. He's small. I'm like, really? Come on, really? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, he destroyed us. He threw us everywhere. He could have done, he could have really, really seriously hurt us on the ground with this with this guy. Yeah. Because yeah. he knows the techniques. Yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it was How amazing. Did you after three days, he submitted me. I think about seven times in the in the in in four minutes, and he was taking it easy. Yeah. And in 30, 30, after thirty sessions, and I really, really worked hard. Uh, he submitted me one time, so I I, I progressed a lot. Yeah. Okay. You know, you know what it is. You're gonna love this because you're a boxer. There was an old quote, and I, I think I'm getting the people right, but it was uh, Mike. It was it was Henzo Gracie. He's a Gracie, so jujitsu guy, and of course, everybody knows who Mike Tyson is. And somebody asked him, could you beat Mike Tyson in a fight? And he said, well, yeah, yeah, I think I could beat him in a fight. And he goes, oh, I don't know, man. Mike Tyson's a lion. And he goes, that's true. He is a lion. He goes, but but I'm a shark and I'll bring him into the water. So meaning yeah. I'll put him in the place where he doesn't know what he's right, doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which for a boxer, like if you were going to fight a wrestler, if he tried to stand with you, you yeah. have your way with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're on the ground, like with the jujitsu wrestler, and then now it's in their world, yeah, right? So, 100%. And it's basically just, they don't know what to do. Yeah. Totally. You know, yeah. you have, you make a butt. So in 30 days, what you learned was, maybe you didn't become a great jujitsu guy, but you at least knew how not to drown. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? You, yeah. you, you learned in that 30 days that it's like, it, in order to conquer somebody, it's about technique. And that goes exactly <laughs> right. back to what you were saying with the street fighting of uh, uh, the small guy, the big guy. It's like, if the guy, smaller guy knows how to throw a punch, it's the technique Behind that the wins punch. that exchange. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So, so okay, uh, what about, uh, here's a defensive question. So if I feel like, or I know I'm about to get a punch thrown at me, uh, how do I, what's the best way to do, besides not being there, I obviously right, move yeah. out of the way, but what's a better, what's the best way to defend yourself or block? Yeah. A punch uh, <laughs> yeah. that's coming at you. I would. It's like it's like put your hands up and step back. Like you know, if your hands are here and step back, so it's not a, a clean oh, way, way through. Yeah, create create target. some distance yeah. okay. and, and move back. Okay. Footwork's the best defense. Yeah, footwork's <laughs> the best defense. Oh, okay. Yeah. If, you, if you think, and I, and I talk about this uh, when I, when I'm teaching boxing, it's like you can slip, you can roll, uh, you can block with your your hands on your head, but better than all of that is a step back because you're not you're not in range to get hit. Mm -hmm. And if you are getting hit while you're stepping back, it's kind of taking the sting out of the punch. So putting your hands up and stepping back. Uh, now you say foot footwork yeah. and you say step back. Now I'm thinking average person knows how to step back, but I also know enough to know that there's way more to footwork than just like I know how to move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are common mistakes people make with footwork in, in an altercation in that way? Right. Bringing your feet together. Because if you think if you bring your, you need to keep your feet apart in a, in a wider stance. Because if you bring your feet together, you're off balance. And you can't really throw a punch if your feet's together. Yeah. If you've got a little wider stance, you know, you can you can throw a punch. If you know how to throw a punch, that's why I recommend everyone learn how to throw a punch. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't cost money to, to do this. You can find it on YouTube. What are, what are, the, what are the, the most basic steps to that, to, to throwing a punch? It, it starts with, with your stance and, and your body movement? Yeah. Okay. Turning your hips, fully extending your arm on, on a straight punch, staying relaxed, exhaling. I've done a video on your YouTube channel yeah. years ago with Justin. Yeah. I remember that. the basics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Where, where should you hit some... Okay, so you want to defend yourself. Please stop me if I'm getting boring here. But no. You want to defend yourself. I feel like this is going to happen. I'm in a situation. My back's against the wall, whatever. I got to throw the first punch. Uh, and I want to make it as effective as possible. Besides yeah. knowing how to throw a punch, yeah. where should I aim? If you aim at the chin, but like, you know, if you're in that situation where it's going to kick off and you, your adrenaline's pumping... You can't be like, right, I'm going to hit him right on the yeah, chin. It's hard just, to think. It's hard to think that just in for the face, you know. Just a big, yeah, big, yeah. Just yeah, big just, face. Just yeah, face. that makes a lot of But another thing, and, I, and one of my biggest YouTube videos ever, I talk about how to end a fight in seconds. Yeah. And I see it, you know, it doesn't matter if you're fighting someone the size of Dwayne Johnson or, or, or John Cena. If you're a smaller guy, you'll be able to end this fight if you hit them right in the solar plexus right there. Right, if I don't know if anyone's ever been hit here. Yes, I have. Mate, <laughs> it's terrible. You, you can't it's breathe. So You're on the floor, You're and done. it doesn't have to be that hard. If someone hits you there, mate. You, you, so would you, you say don't. that it's easier to get somebody there than to knock them out on the chin? Uh, it probably is, but I think more people would throw the throw the chin. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah naturally, yeah. you would but think hit him in the face, hit him in the chin, yeah. or the nose, even make their eyes water or something. Yeah, but we, you're saying hit him in the solar plexus. Hit and him that's, in the solar plexus, mate. It's it's game over. Like if 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 Justin, you you punch me there now, and I, I'm not expecting that. I'm I'm done, mate. Yeah, I'm yeah. done for a few minutes. It's all about the expectation. If you yeah, can, if you if you get caught there while you're not braced for it. 
it's there's nothing you can horrible. Do. Yeah. So where and, would you put like a kidney punch or a, a liver punch? I should yeah. Say. I mean, in, in in a street fight, I wouldn't be really trying to throw hooks to the body. Right. Uh, but in a boxing fight, you know, if you've ever been hit around the side there. It's just like that. It's, oh, yeah. it's horrible. Legs, everything. Yeah. It's horrible. <laughs> I, you know, I, uh, at one point, because I was training in jujitsu, I would I would hang around with uh, fighters like who actually fought in either you know cage fighting or jujitsu tournaments or even boxers. And I at one point I was at a bar and we we're all hanging out and there was a guy who was drunk who was kind of starting or whatever. And I remember just how calm some of the guys I was with were in that situation. Um, whereas normally other people would feel threatened, maybe want to fight back or whatever, but everyone was so calm and they're mm -hmm. like, Hey, no, it's no big, no big deal. Let me, let me buy you a drink or whatever. After we were done, I took, I, we went outside and I said, you know, it, it's really wild that you, I know how aggressive you guys are in, in the, in the cage or the ring, but in there, like you had no problem with this guy saying certain things or whatever. And they said, you know, when, if a five-year-old comes up to you and says they want to beat you up, like, how, how do you feel about yeah. it? That's oh, great. you just feel confident. Yeah, yeah. You just feel ultimately. Is that what you feel like when you walk around? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it really is. It's, yeah. it's confidence, and yeah. I've got confidence to, to go anywhere. You know, I'm I'm not not really afraid of you know fighting anyone. Although I never ever would want to fight. But yeah. when you learn how to punch and defend yourself, or learn jujitsu, I think you get this certain sort of confidence. And if you think about jujitsu, you've got a guy on you trying to choke you and strangle you. Or a boxing match or someone punching you in the face. These are uncomfortable situations. And to be successful in these uncomfortable situations, you've got to get comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So learning how to be comfortable, you know, your confidence just goes through the roof. Now you guys, I mean, you, your classes are structured for like more of a fitness kind of cardiovascular yeah. activity, but do you have any cool stories about like, because you teach a lot of like legit technique in terms right, of yeah. like self-defense. That's the boxing. big difference between you guys. You guys actually teach yeah, it's technique. Not just, yeah. It's not just burning calories, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're actually learning a skill. Uh, I mean, have you had any kind of instances where, where a member has come back and been like, man, this has been useful like, uh, <laughs> this weekend. It really like, or got get me out passionate of and actually pursue the, as a career. Yeah. Or they became exactly. I mean, you've probably heard the quote, um, uh, what, what, what is it? The, the, the Mike Tyson quote, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah. 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 You, you know, we have a lot of members like they love it and they get addicted to it. And like, now I, now I want to, I want to box. I want to get in the ring. Mm -hmm. And we're talking people in Los Angeles might be a little bit softer. Than, <laughs> <laughs> right on, like, might, they might slow your roll. And then they, they get punched in the face. They're like, they I'm cool. I'm just going to yeah. come to my box and burn glasses. <laughs> yeah, <inside."> yeah. <laughs> totally. Get, all right, get a mouthpiece on, get a head on. Now they're a little bit nervous and they're in there and it's like, all right. And then jab in the face and they'll turn it away. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's I remember. So I actually had an experience <laughs> like this. So I, for like a, like a year almost, my buddy and I, like we hit, we hit pads for like training and it was just all for getting in shape. That's it. And, and very minimal technique. And then I got to get in a ring with like a real fighter, sm much smaller than me, amateur dude, nothing special, but I mean, just putting the mouthpiece and like learning to breathe mm -hmm. yeah. was like that. I mean, that heightened my heart rate. I was totally. so just trying to breathe and focus on that while I'm getting punched in the face. Oh, the fuck this. I don't want nothing to <laughs> yeah, do yeah. with this. Like yeah, it's quickly, it's something that I thought I was really passionate about that I was doing for a year. Like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. Feeling my punches getting harder. And then I think like, it, but that's what I love about boxing is like the minute that you do spar for the first time, it really teaches you a lot about yourself mm. because like the minute that you get punched, it, it, in your instant reaction tells you whether this is for you or not. Yeah, like yeah. if you're like, <laughs> yeah. if you get jabbed or you, you catch a punch for the first time with head guard and mouthpiece in and you're like, and you cower away and you're like, Oh, I don't like that. Then it, it's not for you. Yeah. Right. Whereas other people you get jabbed the first time. Oh, let's go. <laughs> and it up, fires right? you up yeah. and you want to just like, give me, give me more. Like, you're not getting away with that. You know? <laughs> so it's like, it teaches you a lot about yeah. your mentality. But Adam, straight just away. like you said there about you had the mouthpiece in and you were uncomfortable and all that. Imagine if you continue to do that and you did it for six months and you got yeah. really comfortable doing right. that. Mm. That's what I mean about being comfortable yeah. in these uncomfortable situations. Yeah, yeah. Your confidence walking in any bar or anywhere totally. would like, be, be through the roof. Yeah. yeah, you know what surprised mm. me? I used to train this this uh, old this guy who was 70, I want to say he was 74 when I trained him. Uh, businessman, but he also in his youth boxed a lot. He was, a, he was a boxer and then he managed boxers for a bit. But 74 year old man, and I'll never forget, uh, you know, one day I was at the grocery store and uh, I didn't know he was behind me and he kind of hits me, you know, on the back, like a little back of the head. And I'm like, oh, this guy's hands. 
<laughs> it's so heavy, you know. And and I told him that. I said, I know you were playing around. I said, but I swear to God, if you hit me just a little harder, you put you. I would have <laughs> seen stars. And he said, the last thing a boxer ever loses is his power. Is that yeah. true? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And and that's what we see in boxing. The first thing that goes is your timing. Yeah, you know, your, speed probably your, your, right. Your timing, then your speed. Like your timing of seeing punches come. But yeah, you, you, you never lose your power. But another thing about about getting getting hit, which is crazy, is like the more you do boxing, the more you get hit, the more you get used to it. So let's just say now, uh, Adam, you put a boxing glove on you, you punch me like this hard in the face, I probably wouldn't feel it. But if I did that to you, you'd be like, oh, because you've not because you're not used to it. Yeah. So you you get used to getting punched in the face. <laughs> yeah. That being said, I think it's terrible anyone getting punched in the face. Yeah. You never get punched. Are in you going to have your daughters uh, uh, box? Are you going to teach them? Definitely not. I'll, I'll teach them how to box, but I, when it comes to the head trauma that comes with boxing and getting yeah. punched in the head, it's really, really not worth it. And I don't recommend anyone doing head sparring unless you're going to have a fight. Um, Shoulder, you can shoulder spar, body spar all yeah. day long, but uh, what's what's the point? Maybe the boys they, that try to date them, you can practice yeah. with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Teach yeah. from the capital of uh, Thailand. Yeah. yeah. Bangkok. Bangkok. <laughs> 10 years from now is going to be really interesting. It's gonna be, yeah, it's it's gonna be, be, it really is. That's going to be a good deal. So with, with the, the new venture now and, and moving into this kind of like real, like you guys are going all in on the virtual space, is there any thoughts to um, letting go of the brick and mortar, letting go of the gym? And actually going all in on the, you know, certifications yeah. and then the digital the digital boxing courses and everything. I think we'll we'll keep that there. My my business partner in the gym, uh, Kevin Watson, he's kind of running that. Where I'm focusing more on our other side, the licensing side, where oh, okay. I'm getting boxing classes into gyms with our other product, our, our Connect product, um, and that's kind of what I'm passionate about. I'm I'm not passionate about running a, a brick and mortar gym anymore, but I want to help gym owners, you know have boxing and I want to really help as many people as I can with 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 boxing for fitness and this new product that we've created I think we're really going to Now do how it. do you how do you go okay so I we know Kevin and so that's nice he's he's able to run that how how does the partnership work between all three of you guys cuz you're the three that I know of that are mm -hmm. there's nobody else right uh, yeah we we've, we've just got we brought another partner in uh, Kerry who's kind of a partner in the, in the gym as well okay so like Kevin and Kerry are, are running the, running the gym space uh, me and Glenn is more on the licensing and the, and the academy spaces. Now, well. will they get a cut of any of this stuff that's going on, or is it that they just get the gym stuff? Uh, a, li a little bit, a little bit, uh, yeah. But with the with the academy and the education, that that's just my, me and Glenn who's doing that. Yeah. And then the licensing product, yeah, we kind of using Box and Burn name, letting people license our successful classes out to their gyms. So. Yeah, the gym will get a little cut of that. So the idea really is, is you, you you have a course and a class, and you're gonna you'll be able to offer this to gym owners, teach their trainers, and then they'll be able to run these courses, these classes. These classes, yeah. Yes. So it's basically a turnkey solution. So if you're a gym in West Virginia and you've got no idea at all how to put a boxing class in, but you know how popular boxing is and you want to add a boxing fitness class, well, now we can give you everything you need to successfully and smoothly add a boxing fitness class to your facility with the with all the education, all the programmed workouts that's digitally delivered to you, all the marketing materials and everything you need. Now, originally, I thought it was very similar to like the Les Mills kind of model, but I actually think it's, I would, it's more like F45 or Orange Theory that you guys can literally be kind of hands off because I know Les Mills. They you have to come into the studio, you have to train them, and then they have to then they actually have to teach coursework. Right. You guys are providing the digital assets, so basically the t the the trainer just has to throw it up on the TV like at F forty five or like at Orange Theory does, where they're just kind of keeping the class moving and stuff like that. But the instructing is actually coming from you guys. Yeah, exactly. We we know what works in this space. We've been doing it since twenty twelve, and we know what doesn't work. So with our program workouts, we know that the that the great workouts uh, and we teach the trainers how to teach them successfully that we've done over the years and so far um, the gyms that we're in are seeing uh, seeing great um, great results from it now the, how many uh, how many locations do you guys have that we're, you're running this out we're in nine different locations right now in three different countries so it's like for, for anyone in the world but we've kind of just soft launched soft launched it this is kind of the, the first time we've talked about it on, on a big platform yeah. With the other, because there's a lot of boxing cardio classes and you know you know workout class. 
what, like when you look at those, what did you see that you said, I want to do one that's different? Right. Like, what, what do they do well, that's wrong? The, the, the first thing for us was like you touched on F45, what they're doing with the, inter the interactive element and being able to see what you need to be doing in a class, I think is really important and really innovative and great. But there was nothing that in, in that realm for boxing fitness. So like you touched on boxing fitness classes, they're not really that well programmed you're expected to just quickly learn eight punches in one minute and then you're in the class. And so the form goes out the window, no one's really understanding correct boxing techniques. So we want to bring like that authenticity and like correct boxing technique to the fitness space, which we've done successfully with a brick and mortar, but add in that interactive component where the members can see the form, the combinations on the screen. So they're, they're concentrating on what they have to throw and when they have to throw it. They're seeing the visual, the form's gonna be better. They're gonna get more out of it. And there's the strength and conditioning component too, which they're also following along in the classes as well. So I just think having that visual for a boxing fitness class is huge. And that's something that we saw didn't really exist. No, this is originally what made me fall in love with your guys' business model. I mean, all of us have experience in big box gyms for, for decades. And, uh, and I'm very guilty of this too, of, you know, learning a few combinations on the pads and the next thing you're doing, I'm doing it with all my clients because yeah, they yeah. love it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. there's no doubt clients that get introduced to, you know, hitting pads, they absolutely love so it. So addictive. Yeah. But when I think back of like all the trainers that I saw doing that, including myself, like nobody had proper technique, like <laughs> yeah. nobody was really throwing, we were all doing it for like, oh, it's cardio and it's fun. So there's this huge opportunity for someone to come in that knows how to coach teach. And totally. I see the same thing at like, so you have uh, your dethrones, your rock boxes, you have these classes and they don't put the effort into teaching even the coaches. So you have coaches that are up there mm -hmm. maybe running these classes and they don't want to throw a punch. Yeah, like I have a totally. buddy who owns one of those franchise, two of those franchises, and he can't throw a punch if his life depended on it. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a meathead. <laughs> he guy plays football and he lifts weights, and then I see him throw a punch and like, and I know I can't throw a great punch. He really can't throw a punch. You <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah. So and yet here he is teaching a whole course of people right. how to do it. So I know there's massive opportunity well, that, for you guys to help people. That was kind of the ignition for the academy which we started in 20 uh, late 2015 really kicked off in 2016 was we were like saw a lot of pts and, and coaches trying to teach general population boxing and doing pad work and we were just like horrified by what we would see like huge seen like this, wide angles yeah there's yeah. one guy down uh, venice beach when we when me and glenn were out there i think we were having a few cocktails and he was <coughs> a big juke said guy massive juke said guy and he had these mitts on and a little petite lady and he was like come on one dude and he's like really smashing the hands and i was thinking he's, he's gonna get she's gonna get injured yeah. and then was like do you know what if he brought his elbows in and he went back on the resistance he would actually be not bad and i was yeah. like yeah you're probably you're probably right there and i was like Ah, they yeah, start teaching people yeah. how to do yeah, this. Yeah, the, the, the coaches are doing more work than the boxer. You know, like they're yeah. doing this. The yeah. boxer's just kind of going like this. <laughs> it's yeah. like the wrong way. They're around. hitting the hands. Yeah, and yeah. Like and and what people don't realize is with with mitt work specifically, there's a huge amount of technique, a lot of timing, yeah. and a, and and that does come with experience and and you know doing it. In it's a beautiful somewhere. thing to see when you see it done right. It's oh, like yeah. there's totally, like a yeah. there's a rhythm and flow to both of them. It's very addictive for for the coaches too. Once yeah. you start building combinations and you get that timing and chemistry down with the people you're working with it's great it's great modality it's similar to what we see in the gym in the sense that um some people will treat like uh, like strength training as just a workout rather than it's a skill like mm -hmm. squatting is a skill totally. rowing is a skill pressing yep. is a skill but people they think well if i just get sweaty and tired and yep. sore well, that's the same thing. It's not because no. if you do the skill right, you get a lot of value. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you might as well jump in place because you're doing kind of the same thing. 100%. It must be like that with with hitting mitts or practicing combinations or doing a boxing class. Yep. Yeah. You're going to get like way more out of it if you're throwing punches with correct technique, rotating your core, using your legs for rolls and moving your feet. That's another thing with mitt work as well. You see a lot of it on Instagram and it's very fast and flashy and it looks mm -hmm. cool, but it's all in place. Like right, just right here. Like that. <laughs> and it's like, wait a minute. Add a, add a little this. bit of movement and footwork into it, and that person's going to get 10 times more out of this session. Than so that's just it. social media mitt work. That's yeah. not real. That's, we, 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 I, I heard somebody refer to it as, as happy pads. Like, <laughs> happy pads. Like, hey. Next time you see this, anyone listening, <laughs> next time you see one of them fancy, flashy combinations, just cover your thumb over the boxer. 
right? And then just look at the mid person and you'll just see them just like doing this with all the hands moving <laughs> yeah, backwards yeah. and forwards. <laughs> oh my God, I would have never <laughs> caught funny. that. Yeah. So yeah. literally, so they're not, do, they're not just throwing their hands everywhere. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, we, we, we're making fun of that. And the way we look at it is, is the client's getting a good, if it's for fitness, the client's getting a good workout. They're not trying to be a boxer. Right. They're enjoying it. They're getting confidence. So yeah, we're hitting on a little bit. We, we laugh about it, but I'm, I'm, I'm for it. If, if, as long as they're helping someone and it's, they introduce them to boxing. Yeah, I'm kind well, of. Well, it's back to Sal's analogy. It's like how we look at the gym thing. I'm like, uh, you don't ever want to discourage somebody for from getting into the gym because yeah. they're not using the gym properly. It's like, right. hey, you're, you're here. At least you're so put the mitts on. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, but I get it. But it's still like nails on the chalkboard for a professional. Yeah, in that but, area. <laughs> but, I, but I do want to say this, and I'd love your input on this. Okay, T technique with exercises is there's a few different reasons why you want good technique. One is you get better results. Yeah. But the other one is you minimize the risk of injury. Like a yeah. proper squat done by somebody who can do it properly, uh, who has good strength and mobility, uh, the proper strength and, and, and prerequisite mobility to do it is, I mean, you're not going to get hurt. If you do everything right, it's appropriate. You're not going to get hurt. I'm assuming proper boxing technique isn't just because it makes you effective at knocking someone out. It's also because it keeps you from hurting yourself. If you throw oh, yeah. a punch wrong, totally. look, I learned, I, I know this. I, I, I go throw a baseball as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. If you don't throw with good technique, you don't have the prerequisite you know, strength, y y your shoulder gets sore afterwards. Right, yeah. So I'm assuming the same thing is true when you're practicing boxing, even if you're just punching the air. And on the coaching side too, if you're catching punches, that's why, with, with, that's what probably the biggest thing about our academy is like reducing risk of injury on the coaching side. If you're, you want to take clients, you want to, you know, make people punch harder as your clients punch harder, your technique on the mitts has got to be even better too. So same thing applies for coaches, catching punches reduces that Do you, risk. Have you guys had coaches and trainers who've done other, bo who've taught other boxing cardio type classes and then they go learn from you guys and then they do oh, it yeah. your way and they tell you. Yeah. All, all, all the time we, we, we get them coming along who've, Who've, who've done this and you know I always prefer to work with someone who's got no experience because they've got no bad habits oh. bringing someone in with, with bad habits the same with a client if a, if, a, if a client comes to the gym and they've been boxing for oh I've been boxing for three years but they've been at some gym that's teaching them boxing to the beat and the habits is terrible and they can't get out the bad habits uh, and it's kind of the same with coaches you know what, what's what's funny we, we get coaches who's taught professional boxers come and work with us and you know they'll learn a lot from us but at first they're thinking well how can these guys teach me something new and it, the, it is because teaching someone how to box for a fight to sit teaching someone how to box for fitness it's kind of two different things oh interesting so two totally different worlds yeah, yeah. Two, two different worlds like if you think about this if a if a middle-aged lady came into my professional boxing gym where i where i trained and worked with my trainer and she threw a, a bad job, he'd say, what the fuck was that? Say, Bring that back your face. What are you doing? What's this? Like, they, they don't know how to speak to people. Right. They, 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 <laughs> just get frustrated. Yeah, what was that? Yeah. Oh, this is bullshit. And, like, that, that's, that's and a, she's out the door yeah. Yeah, She's not coming back ever again, yeah. you know? But um, that's why it's all, I feel like it's better to, to turn a fitness professional who knows how to talk to clients wow. into a boxing fitness trainer oh, yeah. than, than a former boxer or, or a boxing coach you know? Oh yeah, you're 100 yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I would expect completely different culture. That's and the attitude. exact same experience that we have with coaches and trainers. I would all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took me half my career to figure this out, but I would rather have a kid with no experience who I get to mold into a, a great trainer than some guy who's got 10 years experience. He's been doing it his way forever, yeah. and now he's going to come into my mm -hmm. my gym and my system and stuff like that. And we do things totally different. Yeah. Like we're constantly butting heads, and right. I have to and have to break all his bad habits. And a lot of times it doesn't happen. Yeah, and those clients value you more in the long term too, because yeah. you you taught them from right. the ground up. You kind of totally gave them that education as well. Totally. Um, another thing as well is we we're giving coaches like systems too, which is something that's. I think it's invaluable is like, like Tony said, they'll come from, you know, boxing backgrounds or even fitness backgrounds. And they'll be like, they don't have a system to teach someone for the first time. So it's like, you get someone coming into your classes or your gyms and they're like, I want to box first time, you know, like, like, all right, well, what do I teach them? Like, what order do I teach them? What do I teach them first? And it could be different every time. And it used to be like that at our gym. We would just kind of make it up as we go along for the first couple of years because we were just super busy. 
dialed in that system. Ah, oh, this is working. Okay, this is working. Mm. This is what's bringing people back in. Now we've got it down. It's the same every single time someone comes in for the first is time. Is the order of what you teach when you're teaching a class, uh, does that make a difference? Or can people just be like, oh, I know how to do mitts and shadow boxing and I'll just throw it in there wherever. Like, does, does that make a big difference? You said systems. Why does that make a difference? Why would you want that? Um, because if if all your say for your example you're a fitness director or a gym owner yeah. right and you you're running boxing classes and you've got two or three coaches teaching your boxing classes and then one one class he's teaching them this and then the next time they come in they go to the second trainer and then they go oh you came last time I'm going to teach you this and like, oh well that guy told me to do it this way and this guy told me to throw the hook this way it's like that's why you need systems so mm -hmm. it's consistent so they're getting the same information yeah. the repeat information. Um, obviously the classes and the programs can be varied up, but like when you're teaching people from the ground up, the systems is key. And that's mm -hmm. what we've pride ourselves with the academy is we're teaching these coaches a system. So then when they bring on new clients, they've got that confidence to then go and teach the same thing over and over again. And we've proven that it works. Like if you teach them the system in this order and use these specific cues, they're going to feel confident. They're going to come back. They're going to understand it better. And that's kind of why we've had success with the Academy. I think. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things we liked most, uh, and Adam touched on this about what you guys did with your gyms was that I, you guys had, there was technique. People yeah. learned some technique and skill. It yeah. wasn't just uh, a workout, mm -hmm. which, you know, if you just want to move, that's fine too. But as a business owner, first off, as a trainer, I like that there's technique because there's authenticity behind it. And mm -hmm. I'm a, obviously with what I teach, Technique is very important. So I would imagine that with whatever you guys teach, being experts in that field, that's going to be very important yeah. as well. But as a business owner, I thought to myself, man, uh, a customer coming in and just, you know, throwing their hands in the air to music versus learning, actually learning like, oh, this is like the proper position for a jab. This is how yeah. I throw a straight. This is how I throw a hook or, you know, this is the positioning for it. They leave with something more mm -hmm. than just sweating. And I, I felt at the time this would offer more value. And you guys are showing that. Yeah, yeah. You're learning a new skill. Again, it comes back to that confidence as well. Once you've learned that new skill, uh, it ups the confidence. And if I went into a, a gym and I seen the boxing program or the boxing classes and I seen everyone just throwing wild, crappy punches to the beat, I'm like, this is not great. But yeah. if I went into a gym and you come to our gym, you see all the clients, I mean, they're all not amazing but they're all trying to throw real boxing form and technique it's uh, it's a it's a lot better so when when with with classes like yours i've seen other boxing classes and uh, what the instructor typically does is walk around and try to get everybody to go harder go harder go faster yeah. come on you can go you can do it yeah your guys' instructors are correcting form yeah as what, they walk around exactly yeah so what i see if you can't do something slow and correct. Don't do it fast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's the same with throwing punches or moving your feet. You know, if you can't do it slow, don't do it fast. Uh, but yeah, obviously we want to get them a good workout. So we'll, we'll encourage them to punch punch a little bit harder. But yeah, it's all about good good form and, and techniques. So you learn that skill. Mm. But I, I think the main thing is, uh, and what we tell all our trainers is, we need to make sure that the clients have fun because they can learn to box like Floyd Mayweather, but if they didn't enjoy the session, didn't sure. have fun, they're not going to come back. Sure. They're going to have a great workout where they, they can't walk when they're exhausted. But again, if they didn't enjoy the workout, they're not going to tell their friends about it or post you on social media. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing mm -hmm. is to enjoy it and have a great workout. Yeah. And we're trying to really pull away from this, like, go till you drop mentality. You know, we, we always had a reputation in the early days, like the, the class was really hard. It was an hour long and we were pride ourselves on members being exhausted, but like kind of steering more to like smarter training now, where if you could, if you do a, a box and burn class, whether it's at box and burn itself or at one of the gyms that we're licensing to, you're going to get a smart 45 minute workout where you're going to enjoy it. You're going to get, you know, burn calories and get a great workout. You're going to learn something along the way, but we, we have it programmed where you can do that like three, four times a week. Like the goal here isn't to just blast you on Monday and then you can't walk for three days. It's like, that's not good for a gym when their members can't come back in are for you, two or three are you guys, uh Are you guys any good at boxing on Oculus yet? Oh, mate, I it's am. It's fun, isn't it? Are you good? <laughs> yeah. Have you played it? Oh, hell oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, hell man. Yes. I, I'm, so I can, I can do advanced four guys in a row. 
Put him down. <laughs> that's my. That's my. That's good. Yeah, it's my claim to fame, right? So he he can box for reals now. Is what he, said. <laughs> yeah. 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 he told me. So what do you think of it though? I think it's the pretty real. Okay. Yes. Like, yeah, I mate. Mean, it's amazing. So at the beginning of the year, I lost weight by doing that. Yeah. I so I be, I was using it as cardio. That's, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Was as yeah. Well. Like, that's about twenty minutes of like intense now, cardio. Are, are, are you as good on Oculus as you were in real life? I or? think I'm better. <laughs> you know why? I can take I can take better punches. So I want to hear your critique on it because I was so it that game is what made me go buy the oculus goggles because i was so impressed with the realism right uh, of it so it's does insane, it right? for, yeah for somebody with your experience because now it's really in your world yeah. does it feel pretty i mean obviously it's not like fighting a person but yeah would you say it's it's, it, it's uh, the, the reason why it's, it, it's realistic is because the harder you punch the more damage it does which is great yeah and then as well if you if you punch in them and the blob on it you know, mm -hmm. hit them to the body, drop the hands, and then come over the top, yeah. which I was blown away with. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow, this is real. So it's making me, me think and, and yeah. have fun, and I, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, I and, love it too. Uh, what, what, what's crazy, right? I reached out to the uh, the creator of, of, of this game. Oh, you did? On LinkedIn. I was like, mate, this is this is amazing. You've done a great, great job with this. Uh, uh, I'm a big fan. I was kind of hoping that I would get a sponsorship from a YouTube channel. And he responded like, wow, Tony Jeffries, I can't believe you're, you're, you're sending me this message. We used a lot of your videos for the techniques. No the way. Game. And I was like, what? No way. That's amazing. Oh, he's like, that's great. No wonder you liked it. He's yeah. like, God damn, this is accurate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that big blonde guy, that, that, I've that. got a feeling he's maybe a bit after me. You know, uh, big blonde guy. Uh, yeah, Are yeah. there two player options on that? Uh, I, I've never not, not yet, but yeah. he told me that they've developed uh, Thrill of the Fight Two. What's going to be a lot more realistic, and Guys. he said he's going to give me first access to that when it comes I, out. I, I, I mean, they're, they're, the Oculus goggles, in my opinion, are worth it just for that yeah. game. Yeah, could you, it, could you imagine putting them on and you get to box oh, yeah. Tony Jeffries? Oh, yeah. 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 I'm Big so man. glad it's got your stamp of Oculus. approval because I was so blown away by it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I told everybody about it after I got it. I was just like, this thing is so. It was, you know what it was too, yeah. was, and I don't know about your experience, but you know, the last time I tried anything VR wise was probably years ago, and I, the technology was so shitty back blocky, then right. that I thought it was going to look weird and not. But boy, when I put that thing on, I was like, "Whoa, I feel like yeah, I'm here." And just like you arena. said, like the game was so responsive. Like yeah. you, if you mm -hmm. you get away with a couple of jabs, like they figure it out and they put their hands yeah. up, but you yeah. got to you got to figure it out. And and move. in between rounds, I'm like sitting down. Like, <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my wife's like. Tony, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just sat there in the corner with some goggles on going. <laughs> yeah. What are you watching? I can, get, yeah. I can get four fights. After four fights, I am done, man. I am yeah. absolutely yeah. done, and I am drenched in sweat. It's, yeah. it's great cardio. So good. Uh, I'll, yeah. use the, I'll use the controller. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, the first time I tried it, well, it was, I was so realistic. Uh, I was, it was like loading up, and then boom, I was in the ring in like some gym in New York or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, we're getting ready to go like this. And I'm like looking at old guys sat around the yeah. ring. And the next thing it's like, ding, ding, ding. And then the guy's like the right guy's here. Like, right. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like realistic. You can't switch yeah. off for a second. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. Okay, so this, so what you, what you guys are doing essentially is you guys, are, you guys have created this course where a gym can come and you can teach their trainers. And then they have this course that they could have taught in their studios so people could do this boxing. Yeah, it's like workout. a turnkey solution out in boxing to any gym in the world, like successfully, where we give them like all the program workouts on the screen so they'll follow <coughs> along with it. And we educate the trainers how to how to box, how to teach boxing mm -hmm. and how to teach this class so they'll have success with it. And not only not only that, how to build relationships and build the community and retain clients because again, that, that's, that's key. And then as well, all the marketing side, we give the gyms as well. So uh, the gym can can promote this because mm -hmm. as you boys know, you could have the best class in the world, but if nobody knows about it, like you're not going to get very far. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's like a, a, we've, we've, we've put everything in, into this and uh, I think it's going to be very successful. And I think it's going to help so many gym owners there, you know, bring back in old members that they might've lost through the pandemic who want to try something different or help retain clients that might be getting a bit bored of, of their, their workouts mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So well, excellent. Well, we wish you guys all the luck in, in the world. And, and, and where does, if someone wants to do, if there's a gym owner listening right now, interested, do they just go to your? Website? Yeah, go to TonyJeffies.com and you'll find out all the information. Excellent. On there. Well, I mean, we know you guys. You guys are uh, tons of integrity. You've always been uh, very nice to us, and uh, thank you. We, we really appreciate what you guys are doing. So doing good yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. thanks. You definitely have our guys. stamp of approval. Yeah, yeah thank appreciate you. It. Thank you. The rules that apply to somebody who is going from, a man who's going from 20% body fat to 15%, the rules that apply to that person are the same as the, the rules same. that go from 10% to 5%. The difference is everything that we talked about.